Fallout 4 is the most combat-heavy focused game in the series, as there are very few situations that aren't resolved with a few well-placed bullets, rather than letting players use their heads and find out other ways to solve a predicament. Well, if we cannot use our own head, we may as well use someone else's, as today we figure out, can you beat Fallout 4 with the salvaged Assaultron head? I get a lot of requests for weapon-based runs in Fallout 4. It's been a few weeks since my last Fallout 4 video, so it was between this and the Broadsider and ultimately this one out for one reason and one reason only. I have never used this before. All I knew about the weapon prior to starting the run was that it was part of the Automaton DLC, so I would need to go partway through that to get the weapon. I will need to fight past a few enemies before I can get the weapon, so to make this run possible, I will need to use a companion for certain parts of the DLC, but we will cross that part when we come to it. Lastly, the main drawbacks of the weapon are the slow reload speed as it effectively just works like a laser musket, and the fact that every time you fire it, you are inflicted with 50 points of radiation. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like that last one scares me, because after all, power armor and radiation suits exist. Now with all that out of the way, let's begin. One look at my special stats and I wouldn't blame you if you all thought I assigned them randomly, but believe it or not, a lot of thought went into this. The Assaultron head counts as a pistol, so I wanted the agility perk that allows you to increase damage with one-handed weapons. Intelligence is at 1, so I can get the most out of the idiot's vamp perk, which should also explain why luck is at 5. And finally, Endurance and Perception have the exact points needed to get the Ghoulish and Refractor perks. One will let me heal while taking radiation damage, which seems like a good idea seeing how I'll be irradiated every time I fire the thing, and the other is to give an added bonus against energy weapons as I will come into contact with a lot of robots in the early game through the DLC. Also, to get this out of the way now, I am thinking about siding with the real road, which means a lot of fighting against Synths and Brotherhood. Oh, and also, Charisma is at 3, so when I get to Sanctuary, I can use the I'm Special book to bump it up to 4, and take the Lone Wanderer perk to once again help with my defences whenever I'm alone. Also, if any of you are curious, Tim Lockwood was the inspiration behind my character's appearance this time around. Is this important to the video? Not at all, but the longer I talk about stuff like this, the less footage I have to show you of me mindlessly grinding away levels via settlement building until I reach level 15, so that I can actually have access to the DLC. This took close to an R, by the way. But I went into all this a little while ago in the Shredder video, so there isn't a lot to go over, just scrap everything and fence away. I was a little concerned when the quest didn't immediately pop up once I hit the level requirement, but thankfully I just had to leave Sanctuary for things to get started. Sprinting straight to Ada isn't at all difficult, what ends up causing problems is that she gets swarmed immediately and goes down. I attempted to run and distract the others from my robot saviour, but that just got me a first class ticket to the afterlife. Attempt number 2, and I notice that after Ada gets knocked down, she will get up by herself after a few seconds without me helping, so long as I'm standing at a distance. That certainly makes things easier, as the whole time I was worried I would need to keep repairing her with robot repair kits. She continues to get put down repeatedly by the swarm bots, but seeing how this is really my only option, as the bots will not approach me for whatever reason, it just became a waiting game until she cleared them all out. After she has taken out the trash, we can talk, and I get on with the first real quest, which is taking out a robo-brain at the General Atomics Factory. Having Ada along for the ride even briefly help him running past high level enemies, or rather enemies that are my level, but are actually equipped for this point in the game, unlike myself. Inside the factory, history repeats itself as Ada gets swarmed and knocked down, before she can do any real damage, resulting in a very quick death for myself. This happens a few more times as I just initially hoped that I could heal her with the repair kits and power through, but in the end, the robots were just too strong. I even went back to Sanctuary and gave her some upgrades, but still nothing changed all that much. Attempting another trick I learned from my Fallout 4 grip video, where if you leave an area, your companion will return to you with full health, I went outside in the hopes that Ada would follow, and then just go in and out until the job was done. That did not happen, but rather, all of the mechanist goons, including the Robobrain, followed me outside. Ada once again didn't survive for long, so I was ready to make a run for it, when I remembered there are super mutants in the building right next door. The idea was to lure the robots over and have them fight the mutants, in the hopes that maybe they could injure them enough to the point where a fully healed Ada could finish them off. Shockingly, I didn't even need Ada, as the mutants were more than a match for the robots, and before long, the only one left standing was the Robobrain, which quickly got overwhelmed, allowing me to steal its brain and complete the quest. This then led into another almost identical quest, the only difference being that there were less enemies, and we were meant to be outside. Naturally, Ada comes out on top in this scenario, and only now is it time for us to head over to the Fort Hagen Hangar, where we can finally begin the run. The journey to Fort Hagen is a simple one, as I must run it every Fallout 4 video, so I know exactly where I'm going. For some added protection, I swing by the Federal Ration stockpile to grab a suit of power armor. It's currently missing most of the actual armor, but that's okay. I only need the frame for what I have planned. Getting inside has me hack a terminal and then watch as Ada burns the rest of the robots alive. We hit a snag in the room with Jezebel as not only did I make the unfortunate mistake of talking with her, which causes Ahab the edgy sentry bot to attempt to forward down forward high punch me, 
but the door also locked behind me and Ada was trapped outside, leading to my death. Next attempt, after forcing Ada to enter the room, I tried to have the two of them duke it out, but it became clear that outside of lowering the difficulty, Ada was never going to win this battle. Third attempt, and I realised that you can just keep making your way through the facility without talking to Jezebel, and thus I won't need to deal with Ahab until I get the salvage to Saltron Head. This means Ada is also able to back me up once again and take out any of the wannabe Decepticons while I rush in like a madman. When I reach Ivy, thankfully of the non-poison variety, I can walk on past and finally make it to the conveniently placed reskin Skyrim treasure chest and claim my weapon. I was smart enough to grab every fusion cell I saw up to this point, which was quite a lot mind you given the fact almost every robot uses them. The head can charge up to 5 times before firing for maximum damage, Ivy was my first test subject, and needless to say, it seems to be pretty good so far. But let's make it better. You can't upgrade the weapon at a workbench, so I've been investing in the Gunslinger perk for a good boost of damage, but for even more damage, and the reason I said I only needed the power armor frame, is Ivy's unique set of power armor. Wearing her arms and torso grants a damage boost to energy weapons so long as they're not broken, meaning I will want to keep this set on at all times and try my best to keep it repaired, which honestly won't be that hard. Anyway, back to the matter at hand, I stroll on back to Ahab and get the jump on him by opting to attack him first before speaking to Jezebel. Two max charge shots bring the poor thing down to low health, and from there a four charge in vats, while a little overkill, seals the deal, allowing me to grab Jezebel, leave the hangar, and finish the quest. When I get back to Sanctuary I make sure to dismiss Ada, as now they have the gun, I don't need her along for the ride, and as per usual in weapon restricted runs, companions will be forbidden from this point on. For some extra early game fusion cells I decide to go help Preston and the gang conquered, as you can get some from the laser musket on the ground, as well as the corpse nearby. The raiders all go down to two or three cranks, which is to be expected, after all I am pretty well geared for this part of the game, plus their armour doesn't offer a lot of energy resistance. After figuring out that Sturges may in fact have gone crazy, I ignore his mini gun plan and just start disintegrating everyone who even remotely looks in my general direction. The raiders and Deathclaw that chew up as part of Wave 2 are a complete joke. Although I did hit the Deathclaw with a max charge in his weak spot while he was trapped in his animation, so perhaps this was unfair. With the streets littered with brain bits and blood I return to Preston for my 50 fusion cell reward, and just because I'm having a lot of fun with the new weapon, I even make my way down to the Drumlin Diner where everyone gets to feel just how much energy I truly have right now. I did not need to kill Trudy and Patrick, but I wanted those supplies, and like hell I was paying for them when they were all sitting right there. Thanks to my previous jaunt around the map in search of my severed head cannon, I have quite a few locations near Diamond City, so I can easily make my way to purchase more ammo. I figure fusion cells will be in low supply until I get to Kellogg, so to avoid any situations like in the Gamma Gun run where I ran out of ammo mid-fight and had to leave and return later, I am just going to overcompensate now by buying every fusion cell that Diamond City vendors have to offer me. Fortunately, I came prepared for this as I have been gathering supplies that will sell for a pretty penny, mainly other ammo types and weapons that I will have absolutely no need for. After my off-screen shopping montage was complete, I had just over 200 fusion cells, which seemed like more than enough to deal with the Triggerman guarding Nick. However, they were not my first port of call, but rather I was going to make my way over to Cambridge to take out Paladin Dance and his squad. There is no benefit to me doing this other than not having to maybe fight Dance later when I make it aboard the Prudwin. In fact, doing things this way will make me a permanent enemy of the Brotherhood, so once the reinforcements arrive, I will be attacked by them on sight. They attempt to put up a fight, the key word there being attempt. The most impressive display on their part was when Dance suddenly attempted a death cartwheel. I ended up wasting more fusion cells than I could recover from the Brotherhood and police station, but that's alright. Much like the Omerdas in New Vegas, I can't imagine the Triggerman's suits and suspenders will stop a high-powered laser. Speaking of people who will not stop a high-powered laser, Swan is an exceptionally easy kill this time around, although I did start the fight with a fully charged sneak attack as well as a fully charged crit to the head, so it's hard to say how difficult this would have been if I'd fought him head on. As expected, the Triggermen function just like raiders in terms of health and survivability, meaning the most go down with the double charge and a select few have to be difficult and take three to go down. I disintegrate Dino right before Nick's eyes which may have scarred him for life, but that's not important as we fight our way through the mob and when we get to Skinny, he is more interested in talking and not on doing something about the slowly charging beam right in front of his face. Shocker, a full charge kills him and then the rest go down within a few more seconds. With Nick saved we do a little sleuthing and I can now progress to Kellogg, or as I'm choosing to see it, a literal gold mine of ammunition. As I was at Fort Hagen earlier to grab the Assaultron head, I have to walk a grand total of 50 feet to enter the base itself and start the simple synth slaughter. The synths may have been more difficult if I wasn't hitting the majority of them with fully charged lasers, as while 5 energy cells is a decent chunk of my ammo to begin with, as soon as I take down a synth I can usually take their ammo and weapon for an average of 15 more cells for a net gain of 10 fusion cells per kill. 
That's not to mention other cells that I'm able to find just lying around, so suffice to say I am going to be leaving here with just a little more ammo than when I entered. By the time I reached Kellogg I had 285 cells, which was over double what I entered with. Speaking of Kellogg... Yeah, he's toast, much like Swan, a banked crit saves me the hassle of having to fight him the normal way. No clue how I am getting the necessary implants and brain from his cremated corpse, mind you, but I digress. Next up is Good Neighbor in the Memory Den segment, so just lots of running and skipping past memories because I really don't care about Kellogg's backstory, seeing how he is a complete non-entity from this point forward. The only thing of worth that happened in Good Neighbor was that for some bizarre reason, after I left the Memory Den, the entire town turned hostile against me. I have no idea why this happened. I did nothing differently than I normally do when I'm here. Not that I'm complaining, mind you. Free experience is free experience. After all, the only true annoyance is the fact that Hancock and Degree Celsius here have God Mode enabled, so I can only knock them down. Immortality is a curse rather than a blessing, so I really hope they enjoy being the only two people left alive in their run-down little town. On my way to the Glowing Sea, I had my first proper run-in with the Brotherhood. It was more so a war of attrition than anything else. All of us having high energy defence, along with us all being too stubborn to use anything but laser weapons, resulted in a fight that slogged on for far longer than it had any right to. Not to mention a second vertebrate appeared with reinforcements, just as I was about to finish with the first batch of knights. At one point I even took out the pile of the vertebrate, but for whatever reason, the thing continued to fly around, so good to know that the vertebrates are in fact living things. When I finally emerge the victor, my armour isn't just in poor condition, most of it is straight up destroyed. I thought the power armour would have offered me enough protection against energy weapons, but if that's what a couple of knights could do, I dread to think what will happen when I have to fight them in force for the railroad. Before I head into the Glowing Sea, I make my way back to Sanctuary for some armour upgrades. As mentioned before, for the rest of this run, I am probably going to be at the mercy of energy weapons, given that I'll be fighting the Brotherhood and Institute. So, to double down on my energy defence, I upgrade my power armour to the Chrome Paint, as it offers extra resistance to all energy based weapons. Is it a little overkill? Yes, very much so in fact. But I would be a fool to not use the resources at my disposal, plus I get an odd number of comments from people who get annoyed that I don't use power armour to its full extent in Fallout 4, so I'm going to make the most of it. The trek through the glowing sea is the same as usual, a whole horde of ghouls that prove there is no such thing as strength in numbers, and then the unbridled destruction of the children of Adam for simply having the gall to exist. Feeling good, I talk with Virgil, and now it's off to green tech for even more potential ammo drops. I don't know why, but for some reason the gunners were even weaker than the majority of the enemies I fought up to this point. Most of them went down to a single charge, which is so strange as they are normally quite formidable opponents by this point in the game. All I can think of is that I am currently level 22, and maybe the game bugged out and they didn't scale up properly. I'm honestly not sure. Still, I wasn't going to let my guard down, just in case something happened. By that, I of course mean that one gunner near the top of the missile launcher, who has probably killed me more time than any other NPC in Fallout 4 now that I think about it. I thought he was about to get me again as just as I entered VATS against him, he fired off a rocket. Luckily, my shot took him out first, and thanks to the ability to cancel out of VATS at any time in Fallout 4, I was able to cancel the animation of watching him die, and could then quickly jump over the missile into the left to avoid it just in time. That was pretty cool, but you know what's even better? Making a complete joke of the courser. Hey there. Are you here for the synth? Uh, I'm here to pick up an order. Two large pepperoni and a calzone. Name is... Fuck you. With the second brain chip in hand today, it's off to the railroad to get decoded, and against my better judgement, I don't start killing them as soon as I can. If I'm going to be working with them, that means I'll need to help Deacon out with a switchboard quest before they'll be able to help me build the teleporter, so I go to do that real quick. After meeting with the contact, Deacon mentions that we can go in either guns blazing, or sneak in the back. Due to my love of the Metal Gear series, I do enjoy me some stealth from time to time, so normally I choose the stealth approach. But for once, I decide to go in the front, as why not? I have this incredibly powerful weapon, so I see no reason not to. Well, after taking out the synths, we make it to the elevator, and surprise, surprise, it doesn't work, meaning we have to go in the other way anyway. The illusion of choice. I came for violence, and by god I am gonna get violence, so I ran on through the other way, and made a point to go as hard and loud as possible, just to prove I have some choice over my actions. If you want to know exactly how well the carnage went here, know that I completed the quest with over 999 fusion cells. In other words, I killed every synth and took all their ammo and weapons. After returning the prototype and teleporter plans to Desdemona, I was worried I would need to complete more railroad quests before they would pitch in. 
Luckily, that was not the case, so I went back to Sanctuary once more, constructed the teleporter, entered the Institute, and offered my assistance to them, all the while knowing I would double-cross them for the railroad. I have to do a few things for the railroad here and there, such as talking with their people on the inside, and a whole thing at the Polymer Labs. But truth be told, they are so boring and straightforward, that other than the footage you're seeing about them on screen right now, I am not going to be talking about them anymore. Because the railroad is comprised of boring individuals, their storyline is actually just the Institute's main quest, with a few things thrown in near the end to spice things up. That means me and X6 still get to teach some raiders a lesson, and by lesson I mean we bully them with our superior firepower until the game says stop and we kidnap their leader. Pleased with my efforts, Father sends me the Bunker Hill to do some more kidnapping, but of course that's quite literally the opposite of what the railroad want, so I inform Desdemona of the plan, and will instead just shoot the courser and finish the quest the good way. It may be straightforward, yet I still have to do the quest twice, as for whatever reason, the first time I did, the real row turned on me, and as happy as it would make me to return fire, I instead just load back, repeat the quest, and now for some reason we're friends again. Naturally, Father doesn't believe me when I tell him the reason I failed to bring back the runaways is because me and the Corsair were ambushed, resulting in his death. Yet despite the fact he doesn't think that's true, he allows me to continue working with the Institute for some reason. Next up is Mass Fusion, which is normally a decently long mission as you have to take the elevator ride all the way down to the bottom. But you see, with the power of armour, not only can we tank the Brotherhood on the top floor, but I can also hell jump off the western side of the building to land at the entrance, where I can then take the elevator down from there into the highly irradiated gamer basement. After grabbing the agitator, I have a first person cover shooter fight with a sentry bot, and then murder two assaultrons with the head of one of their own. Think for just a moment what that must feel like for them. That's mass fusion out of the way in record time, and now I have to go save a doctor, but because I lack the necessary charisma to do anything but speak in somewhat coherent sentences, I just rely on my allies to knock him out and return him to the Institute. Next up is the radio segment. And what do I say? It's the radio segment, it's a glorified cutscene disguised as a quest. On the bright side, after I fix up the reactor, I am approached by more undercover synths, and now it's time to switch things up a little as it's back to being a railroad agent, meaning I return to the church and warn of an impending Brotherhood attack, which just so happens to take place the moment I return. I will not sugarcoat this, I am far beyond overpowered by this point. I have 4 ranks in the Gunslinger perk along with the increased energy damage provided by my unique power armour, and due to all my careful defence planning such as having perks like Refractor and Toughness, along with the energy resistance upgrades I made to my armour, the Brotherhood and the Church never stood a chance. In fact, the best way I can demonstrate how strong I was by this stage is the fact that when we were meant to sneak aboard the Prudwin, I scrapped that idea entirely and just went in and single-handedly took out everyone myself. I still had to plant the bombs, mind you, which was just to take out the children, which is a little messed up, but whatever. Not to worry though, I made sure this couldn't be blamed on the railroad, as after I dealt with Max and his guards, I stripped him and put a bottle of beer in his hand. This means that whenever they find the bodies, they will think the Elder was drunk flying again. With the Brotherhood up in smoke, it's now time for the nuclear option quest to blow up the Institute. Although, I noticed that I still had quests for the Institute. I just assumed after taking out the Brotherhood the railroad's way that I'd be locked into their quest, but apparently, that doesn't seem to be the case. So... The time has come. Execute Order 66. Yes, my lord. I double cross the double cross, that's what we call the ocelot play. Anyway, I return to Father who is now very much on his way out, finishing the game and proving yes, of course you can beat Fallout 4 with the salvaged Assaultron head. It's always fun to experiment with a weapon that I have never used before for one reason or another, and I highly recommend giving the Assaultron head a go if, like me, you have never tried it before, as despite how easy this run got after getting the thing, this was still a lot of fun. Regardless, that's going to be the end of this challenge video. If you enjoyed what you saw, consider giving the video a like, and if you're interested in more challenges in the future, feel free to subscribe, as I try to have one of these videos out every week. My name's Nerbit, stay safe everyone, and I'll see y'all in the next video. 